people will tell you once you puncture the evaporator plate that you're basically screwed and out of luck, and that is not the case. Oh, and here's Zach with it. our fridge. All right, so step one, unscrewing the evaporator plate. There's two screws up there. So I just took out some screws here and this will remove, it's called a sled, and it basically holds all the important stuff. Um, it's not gonna come out right now because this tube goes all the way into the fridge. So the next thing we're doing is just removing this putty and all this does is keep the cold air inside the fridge and the hot air out. So note again that I am not using anything sharp. A better view of this, this is the suction tube that goes to the evaporator plate. This thing here is a capillary tube, but it's the thermometer. Um, so what we're gonna do is disassemble this and put it in the new uh, evaporator plate. It does not come with a thermometer. So this cage actually holds the evaporator what? plate. Can you grab <laughs> I'm currently taking out these two screws right here that hold this capillary tube thermometer in place. So this capillary tube, all it does is it comes down, it's soldered at the end in the back. Um, you can't really see it. All this thing does is it holds it in place in the back of the freezer. All right, so Fal just unscrewed those back two screws, releasing that piece. Oh. Now, oh. okay, these are like little. Uh, now she has the prongs that we just undid in the front to deal with in the back. So there, there are four more back there. Once you undo that, you can take the evaporator plate off the cage. Trying to keep this together for you, we just took out the two, or sorry, the full, the eight um, white All the white ones pegs, in here. And apparently those held on this back piece. They must have um, held them on back here. Okay, so this little peg with the washer um, and the anchor goes in the back, and then this just peg plus anchor goes in the front. And they all have to come out because that's what keeps us on. Deluxe tube cutter to cut like right here. And why is that? Um, basically because the factory, they use silver solder, which requires oxygen, which is like crazy, crazy high heat. And we just don't have that. We're gonna, we're gonna break into here and we're gonna put in a coupling. What I do is just make a cut here first to figure out how this works, and secondly, so that we can actually move our thing around. Rather practice here than closer to where we're actually gonna be putting the, yes. the flange. Uh, a coupling, yeah. So it kind of reminds me of a tile cutter. Um, kinda, yeah. In a way, it puts pressure on and then cracks. But this, you're supposed to actually revolve it around this piece to evenly cut instead of like crimp, which is kind of what we just did. But again, that's why we're practicing here first. Yeah, this is, a Who's trash that? piece of wire anyhow, so it's okay. Yeah. So this is a triangular metal file. And what we're doing, there's a, so there's a capillary tube inside this big white tube. For the capillary tube, in order to cut it, instead of using a wire, or not a wire cutter, a copper cutter, file all around the outside, and then you snap it off. All right, so we're currently using this copper cutter to try and cut um, this copper wire as close to this paint as possible. Um, Unfortunately, there is an elbow here, and we've had to sort of support that as we make room for the copper cutter. Um, so that's what we've been doing. It's sort of a two-hand, four-hand job. All right, so this is the progress for the night. So far, we've cut the capillary, um, and then, yeah, we're gonna hop back on tomorrow, put the evaporator plate in. This is the new guy. We have to put back on the plastic bits, we have to reassemble the thermometer, and then we have to get these, these tubes. Um, back through the hole and out to where the compressor is. And that's the hole. Right, so the important part here is just make sure that you don't get rid of these little anchors. Um, that's what keeps everything together. So just the little nubs isn't gonna do it. Um, and then you just stick this guy back on and get the nubs back through. Oopsie. And then push the things in. Hopefully we can stick this back on without anybody falling out. All right, so we got her looking like the old evaporator plate with all these nice plastic pieces. Now we just have to reassemble the thermometer in here, which won't take more than two screws. So all this thermometer tube did was it hooked into the back, and then if you look in here, it's just hanging out right there. It's gonna sit in this plate, and the plate's gonna be screwed to the top. So now what we're doing is we are taking this tube and we're forming it into this sort of snake S. Um, just being careful not to kink anything. And we're gonna get it out through that hole back there. So we just got in the new evaporator plate. It was honestly super difficult 
basically you have to do a snake. This was the old one. We had to do basically that formation on the top and then put in these two screws. So the next thing that we're going to do is take our suction tube that came out from the inside of the fridge and join it with this piece of suction tube that we cut off yesterday. We're gonna join it with two flare nuts and a flare union. So Zach is gonna go ahead and cut. So we're gonna take these flare nuts and we're gonna put them onto the, the tubing first. If your flare nuts are not on the tubing and you make a flare, you will not be able to put the flare nuts on. Down. I've only got one shot. The flare nut has to be on, which it is. All right, let's do this. All right, guys, so we just made our first flare fitting. It's probably not that cute. This nut has to go on first. It gets stuck at where we flared out the metal. Um, we're gonna do the same thing to this side down here. And then we have this flare union, which fits right in there. We're gonna use some of this pipe thread sealant. I looked it up, you can use it for refrigeration. And I'm just gonna put a little bit just around the male threads, that's what it says here. And then we're gonna go ahead and, and wrench these bad boys together. So we currently have two capillary tubes here. One of them is the new capillary tube and one of them is the old capillary tube. What normally would happen is this end would go all the way down and hook in did back here. But this one's already hooked in. So what we're gonna do is we marked about the halfway point. We're gonna lengthen them out, cut them. Then we're gonna lengthen out the rest. You have to cut this with a file, so you're gonna just kind of file all around and then sort of snap it off instead of using a copper cutter because you don't wanna like smush down the capillary tube diameter. I'm just sticking the tip of a needle in here to kind of make sure that our hole is nice and holy. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna take this super long, this is three feet, copper tubing, it's 3 16ths of an inch. We're going to stick a foot of each straight dot capillary tube into each side of this 3 16ths, 3 16ths inch tube. Um, and then we're gonna solder it at the end so there's like no chance that we could accidentally solder the, the capillary tube shut. So this is the other capillary tube down here that I'm pulling from. And we're gonna join the two. We are very gently straightening these out. Right, and we marked the midpoint. You can see a black dot there, black dot here. We're gonna pull these out. If you wanna hold this side. So these are the two capillary tubes. This one in this hand that I'm moving. It's the old one. This is down here, the new one. All right, so now we have our two capillary tube. And again, these are gonna run into this copper wiring that Fallon's playing with. Right now she's about to cut off a very small piece. That way we can play with or experiment with our old copper capillary tubing. All right guys, so we just did our very first practice test on soldering. It looks like it worked. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing with our fridge, only with this huge piece of copper and putting about um, a foot's worth into each side. All right, so now you can see what we've done. It's not the cutest, but <laughs> both of the capillary tubes are in that copper fitting. Just really important that you're super careful with the capillary tubes because if they kink, it changes the inside diameter, which is like literally a pin needle. The point of doing this is because you can't really solder together capillary tube without accidentally getting solder in its little hole. Our little holes are like here and maybe here. And if we're soldering back here, there's almost no way that we're gonna get solder where we don't want it to be. Yeah, so we've soldered the left one, about to solder the right one, yes. cleaning it up with some steel wool. And we are gonna put a little bit of flux on. Okay, and the it. flux is basically just primer for the solder. Perfect. Now that we have connected our old capillary tube to our new capillary and the new suction tube to the old suction tube, our fridge should be in working order. But we're gonna use the vacuum pump to pull a vacuum out. Basically, we're gonna evacuate the whole system. Mostly this is because we absolutely want no moisture in this system. If after 15 minutes we have pulled a vacuum and the vacuum holds in the fridge, that means we do not have a leak. What we're gonna be looking at is if the pressure stays at the same negative number, then we're holding vacuum. However, if the pressure starts to go back up, that means we're leaking in atmosphere, which means that there is a leak somewhere. Most likely, if there is a leak, it's gonna be in here. Thanks for including oil, that was very kind of you. 
so we're just gonna add some oil. Probably takes all of it. Might. This uh, 2.5 CFM vacuum pump from Harbor Freight comes with some vacuum pump oil. Originally, the oil level was down here, and even as I put in like six ounces of oil, nothing was happening. It turns out that this guy has an 8.5 ounce oil capacity, and almost immediately after I hit that 8.5 ounces of filling, it went back up to the appropriate oil. Next, we just opened up our gauge set. This refrigerator does not have a high pressure access port. It only has a low pressure pressure access port. So we're gonna be just using this blue tube. <laughs> we're gonna unscrew this cap. And if you look on the inside, there's a little tire valve right in here. So like the same one that you put air in your tire. The inside of this has a little depressor in it, which will push back on our Schrader valve. Now that our tubes are cooked up, I'm gonna just go ahead and turn on vacuum pump. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and open up our Okay, so it's currently, see how it immediately went down negative? That means it's pulling a vacuum, which is good. I'm going to go ahead and turn off this valve, and basically if the valve line moves any more positive, then we know we have a leak. If it stays where it is, which is, I'd say, it's just about 25. No, you're 25, sorry. Then we are good. I think we did it. As of right now, it's staying at negative 25. We'll come check back in 15 minutes to see if it's moved. We have not moved, which means that our fridge is now holding a vacuum, which means that we can put refrigerant in it and it'll hold the refrigerant. Now our fridge will get cold. Yep, so for the next two hours, we're just gonna keep running this just to make sure everything has been evacuated out of here and then come back tomorrow. Yep, and we're gonna go ahead and recharge it. The reason why we are vacuuming up for so long is because we wanna make sure there's no moisture in here. Any moisture that's left in the system is going to absolutely wreck the, the, the bits and bobs. We are actually gonna put it in the van to vacuum out the rest. Welcome back, fridge. <sighs> We need to have the power on so that we can run the compressor while we're putting in gas. And after we evacuate everything, we will try the gas, I think, tonight. All right, guys, so we're gonna do this again. Open it up. It may actually uh, decrease in uh, PSI slower Hopefully. because <laughs> we actually had to replace the blue hose with the red. Yeah, all we did was, we. you can do this with all of them. It's just a little depressor and you um, you unscrew it to make it a little bit further out. Yep. So now we have this one, we'll see if it takes longer. Previously, by the way, what we were doing is we were literally just pulling vacuum from the hose itself and that's it. Um, so hopefully we pull it from the whole system this time. Sorry, right, Huggy. Hi, lady. Open. So it's moving slower this time, Much slower. which appears to be a good thing. We found out our flare fitting was causing a leak. So now what we are doing... I think our flare fitting was honestly crappy. <laughs> yeah, our flare fitting was wasn't really the best. Bad. So what we're doing instead is we have a brass fitting that we're just going to be putting over the top of these two uh, bits. So you see the evaporator plate over there, the white cord. Um, and then the one that Fal just painted, we're going to be soldering those two together with this brass fitting. So we'll let you know how it goes. So we just soldered that fitting <laughs> to our evaporator plate and our compressor, and now we're going to re-vacuum uh, out everything. And hopefully there's not a leak this time. Feeling good about this. Hopefully this works. So I got this and this at an AutoZone. Um, this is just a 134A can tap. And the way that we put this in is, okay, so you see that little pin down there? Yep. Okay. So we're gonna just open up the valve so that the pin is all the way up. Okay, we're gonna screw it on to the can. Yep. Oop, maybe, hold on. Okay, and in a second, we're gonna just screw it down. The next thing that we're gonna do is just we're gonna put the fuse back into our fuse block so that we can start up our fridge again. We need the compressor to be running for the gas to go in. So now we're hooked up to our yellow. We're gonna open up the blue valve. You guys, we're about to turn on the compressor. If you're wondering why Val has a bandana on, it's because it's so cold in here, but also <laughs> we're about to be putting the Freon back into 
our system, so just in the event that any leaks, she has that. Now the compressor's on, we're gonna open it up and it should move up. So now we're gonna throttle it and the pressure's gonna shoot up. Um, the compressor is able to suck the gas into the system. At, uh, yeah, into our system. Yeah, so we just keep doing this because we don't want to over flood it and let it slowly pressurize as it has to push through this white coil all the way back down into the evaporator plate, which is in the actual fridge. And we're looking for about 11 psi right now. Uh, right now we're at negative 10, so, so we've we'll got keep... quite a way to go. Little by little, so let a little bit in. We're at like negative five, it's still dropping. So anyway, we're gonna do this until we get to 11 PSI, just letting a little bit in and then turning it off, letting a little bit in, turning it off. Cause again, it has to work through all of our copper fittings and everything into the evaporator plate. At this point, we've been able to hold freeze pops. We've been able to hold ice cream. So our fridge is super cold. It works really well, we're really happy with it. One thing that is super important for you guys to know is that we are not professionals in any way, shape, and form, which means that even though we got this fridge to work, it is A, not very clean looking, and B, there are other things that could possibly maybe break in the future or like not be up to snuff with like what your regular refrigerator repair guy might do, but no refrigerator repair guys were willing to help us. So thank you to Clark and Emily who totally helped us with everything. I mean, we wouldn't have been able to do it without them. Honestly, we had to learn so much in order to get this back into working order. So if this is something that really helped you, give it a like so that we can get it out to other people that are interested in learning these sort of DIY tricks.